How's everybody doing? Everybody study? You ready for the test? Yeah, you ready? More than ready? Ready to get it over with? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, as you know, uh, we are in our what? We have one more, our fifth week. So we just have uh, one additional week to work on situational judgment and ability to learn and apply information. Uh, so we're going to continue in the books that we started with last week. So if you do not have the situational judgment book, you need it. Uh, also the ability to learn and apply information and then there's a supplemental book as well. So everybody is okay. Everybody has all the materials. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with situational judgment. So you can open up that book. And what we're going to do, uh, just because some people uh, just got the books today, we're going to go back over some of the uh, explanations. So the numbering is a little off. So again, you're going to turn, you're going to see page one. You're going to flip, you're going to see page two, three, and four. And then the next page, you're going to see page 12, and that's where we're going to start. So I'm just going to read over the subject area for situational judgment, and then we'll get started with some practice problems. So situational judgment. This section tests for the ability to identify appropriate and effective responses to work-related challenges. Candidates will be presented with several scenarios that reflect the types of challenges one could encounter in a work environment. They will then be asked to rate the effectiveness of a number of possible responses to each scenario. Test task. In this section, candidates will read a scenario that describes a challenge one might encounter in a work setting. After reading each scenario, candidates will then be presented with options for addressing the challenge presented in that scenario. Candidates will rate the effectiveness of each of the response options using one of four possible ratings. Highly ineffective, somewhat ineffective, somewhat effective, or highly effective. There may be several approaches that effectively or ineffectively address a given challenge. In other words, candidates may use the same rating, highly effective, somewhat effective, somewhat ineffective, highly ineffective, for more than one response option for a particular scenario. There is a sample scenario. Uh, we went over this last week, so I'm just gonna give you a minute to review the sample scenario. All right, so instructions. It says, a number of possible responses to this scenario are listed on the next page. Read each response option and then rate the level of effectiveness that best describes each possible response to the scenario using the skill provided. Be sure to rate the effectiveness of all the response options. Note that the same rating Highly effective, somewhat effective, somewhat ineffective, and highly ineffective may be used for more than one response option. Turn the page. Next it says, subject area four continue. Please rate each possible scenario response using the scale. If you select highly ineffective, you are stating that the response is likely to result in far more negative than positive outcomes. If you select somewhat ineffective, that means that the response that you choose is likely to result in somewhat more negative than positive outcomes. If you select somewhat effective, that means that the response you choose is likely to result in somewhat more positive than negative outcomes. Lastly, if you choose highly effective, that means that your response is likely to result in far more positive than negative outcomes. Please take a minute. I'm gonna actually give you two minutes because we have some students that are just coming in this week. Go ahead and review the possible scenario responses and then the solution below, two minutes. All right, so hopefully you had an opportunity to review that. We will get into some 
practice uh, scenarios that will uh, utilize the four different uh, ratings that we have there. Actually, it'll be a little bit more than that. But anyway, let's go on and let's review test taking tips for subject area situational judgment. The first thing that it says is identify the problem the question is highlighting. I'm going to say that again. Identify the problem the question is highlighting. Be sure to clearly understand the issue or area that the question is addressing. When reading the question, try to clarify what specifically is the element that needs your attention. If you skim through the scenario without clearly identifying the issue you should diagnose, you will be in a weaker position to tackle the question. Next it states, only consider the options listed. Focus on the responses that are in front of you. It may be that the course of action that you would most naturally do is not listed as an option, but don't let that or this occupy your mind. Also be wary of making assumptions that's really hard not to do, but it says be wary of making assumptions. Try to mainly use the information that's given in the question. Analyze the responses that are provided and focus on their effectiveness and appropriateness. A situational judgment test will assess how you react and behave during a hypothetical work-based scenario. It's evaluating, can you handle conflict? Can you problem solve? Can you identify what's relevant and what isn't? Can you mediate or resolve situations? Are you a leader or a follower? So now what we're gonna do, we did a third of the booklet already. We are going to do another third tonight, so you are going to continue to flip through the questions until you get to number 17. Number 17. Number 17 starts by saying you are the supervisor of a junior officer. Are you there? Yes? Everybody's there? Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to read it. I'm gonna read the options that are provided for you. You're gonna get a two minutes to evaluate it and select your answer. Then I'm gonna read it again. And then we're going to have a small debate. If there's a debate, you all might be on the same page, okay? So let's get going. So number 17 states, you are the supervisor of a junior officer who routinely must pull duty shifts in remote locations with various members of the organization. Recently, this officer has informed you that he does not feel comfortable pulling duty with members of the opposite gender for religious reasons and requests that he not be scheduled with female crew members. Due to the strained nature of the duty schedule, this request will create significant challenges for all members of the organization to fill the shifts, get the required training, and schedule medical appointments and leave. Select the least effective action, A through E, in response to the situation. Is it A, because this request is for a religious accommodation, you work with the scheduler to fulfill the request regardless of the dis disruption to others in the organization. B, schedule a meeting with the unit commander to discuss this request and get instructions for a course of action. C, deny the request and report the individual to the Equal Opportunity Office on base for discrimination. D, immediately deny the request and do not report the conversation to the commanding officer. E, schedule a meeting with the unit chaplain to discuss re this request to see if the request has any religious foundation. Two minutes to evaluate and select your answer. All right, so I'm gonna go through it one more time. It says, you are the supervisor of a junior officer who routinely must pull duty shifts 
shifts in remote locations with various members of the organization. Recently, this officer has informed you that he does not feel comfortable pulling duty with members of the opposite gender for religious reasons and requests that he not be scheduled with female crew members. Due to the strained nature of the duty schedule, the request will create significant challenges for all members of the organization to fill the shifts, get the required training, and schedule medical appointments and leave. Select the least effective action in response to the situation. Is it A, because this request is for religious accommodation, you work with the scheduler to fulfill the request regardless of the disruption to others in the organization. B, schedule meeting, a meeting with the unit commander to discuss this request and get instructions for a course of action. C, deny the request and report the individual to the Equal Opportunity Office on base for discrimination. D, immediately deny the request and do not report the conversation to the commanding officer. E, schedule a meeting with the unit chaplain to discuss this request to see if the request has any religious foundation. What did you choose? D is a dog. I saw a hand over here. What did you choose? You chose C. And what else? Anyone else? All right, so you want to come in, sign, come up and sign in for me? Come sign in for me. All right, guys, so I'm going to come out there, and then we're going to talk about what you chose, OK? You chose D. You chose D, so talk to me why you chose D. Well, I chose D because you didn't think about it. You didn't ask the supervisors. Okay. And the question doesn't even tell you what the D is, so you don't even know. Okay. Did make the plan or not? So. Uh, awesome, awesome. So you guys hear what he said? So of all the choices that it sounds like none of them are effective choices, right? But to immediately deny it would seem like that's the least effective way to address anything. You, you're just not doing anything. So why did you choose C? Because uh, instead of uh, talking to someone high enough and uh, asking about the situation, they just went straight to choosing the person and making it uh, a bigger deal than it could have been. Okay, so C says deny the request and report the individual to the Equal Opportunity Office on a bit. So you said that sounds even worse than D, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so let's just go and uh, great responses. Now, with the least effective, of course, you should go back to the beginning where it says, You can use these as a base. Highly ineffective, somewhat ineffective, somewhat effective, and highly, ineffect, uh, highly effective, right? So something will cause more positive outcomes than negative outcomes. So you should use that as a benchmark, okay? So let's talk about what the book says. All right, so for number 17, D is the correct answer. Immediate, um, is the least effective thing to do, okay? So it says, from the level of a junior to mid-level officer, this is not a request that you are able to grant or deny on your own. Because this is both a resource management concern and one that affects the professionalism of the officer and not wanting to serve with others of the opposite gender, the commanding officer must be informed. Okay, so does that make sense? So from a, a strategy standpoint, again, you have to understand the variations between effective, responsive, and ineffective responses. So none of those sound good, right? So you have to make sure that you understand the differences between what's effective and ineffective, right? But that was the mission for you to pick the least effective action out of all of those, okay? So let's move on to number 18. 18 states, an eager newspaper reporter wanting a headline story attempts to interview a firefighter working at the scene of a two-alarm fire. 
When confronted by the reporter, the firefighter would best serve the department by doing what? Is it A, revealing as many details about the fire as possible? B, threatening the reporter with the prospect of prosecution for criminal trespass? C, enhancing public relations by emphasizing how hard firefighters work. D, referring any questions the reporter may have to his superior. Again, understand what the mission is and evaluate it and select your answer. You have two minutes. All right, so one more time. Number 18, an eager newspaper reporter wanting a headline story attempts to interview a firefighter firefighter working at the scene of a two alarm fire. When confronted by the reporter, the firefighter would best serve the department by doing what? Is it A, revealing as many details about the fire as possible, B, threatening the reporter with the prospect of prosecution for criminal trespass, C, enhancing public relations by emphasizing how hard firefighters work, or D, referring any questions the reporter may have to his superior. What did you choose? D is a dog again? D? Okay. All right, what else? Anything else? Everybody check, uh, selected D? Yeah? Okay, so I'm gonna come out there one more time. Okay, so talk to me, why did you choose D? What was so enticing about D? Okay, so you said uh, the, the fire department should have a public relations person to talk, to speak with, so. Okay, all right, anybody else? Why did you, anyone else wanna offer why they chose D? You guys said you all chose D. What was the rationale? Basically, same thing I was saying. Every government has a school person that will direct all interviews to. And for this, all the answers make sense, but if you select D, uh, the superior will be able to reveal as many details to the reporter, also kind of inform as to why they shouldn't trespass when there's fire, and okay. also at the same time keep the relationship between uh, the department and the uh, public okay. on an even, uh, even ground. Okay, awesome. All right. Anybody else want to offer their answer? All right, good. So now we're going to go into what the book says, all right? All right, thank you for your participation. So the book states that D is correct, so you guys weren't off on that. The explanation that they give is slightly different. It says firefighters should first and foremost worry about the emergency at hand rather than public relations. So you did say that referring to the public, public relations department. But the initial thing was is that it's a fire. And so that's your first concern, right? All right, a too long blaze requires the concerted effort of all firefighters on hand. If some were to conduct interviews, the efficiency of firefighting operations would diminish, thus making the blaze more difficult to break under control. So did you guys use process of elimination when you went through that? Did you evaluate everything and then you said, okay, this sounds like the best answer to choose, right? Okay, awesome. So we're gonna move on to number 19. 19 states, Bob had just gotten off house watch and decided to repay a fellow co-worker for a prank. They, uh, the day had been fairly slow, so Bob went to his friend's locker and filled both his work boots with water. This would be considered, this would be considered A, harmless because both people referred to were off duty. B, harmless because the prank only involves someone getting wet feet. C, 
unsafe because any degree of horseplay can lead to potential injury or hinder response efficiency. D, tolerable because no equipment was damaged as a result of the prank. Two minutes to evaluate, make sure you know what the mission is and select your answer. All right, number 19. Bob had just gotten off house watch and decided to repay a fellow coworker for a prank. The day had been fairly slow, so Bob went to his friend's locker and filled both his work boots with water. This would be considered A, harmless because both people referred to were off duty. B, harmless because the prank only involved someone getting wet feet. C, unsafe because any degree of horseplay can lead to potential injury or hinder response efficiency. D, tolerable because no equipment was damaged as a result of the prank. What did you choose? I heard C over here. Everybody, everybody with C? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna come out there. All right, so talk to me. Why did you choose C? What was your rationale behind C? I chose C because it doesn't matter if the day's slow because if there's a fire at any time, if your coworker goes to go get ready and there's water in the shoes. Okay. So if in the fire, can get injured and your coworker. Okay, so he said it doesn't matter. At any time, you should not play around, right? So you don't know when an emergency is gonna arise. So talk to me about your selection. How did you go through? What was in the other options that kind of turned you off? Is there anything, any glaring red flags that were in the other options that said, hey, these aren't the ones I should choose? Well, it's the all said like harmless or tolerable. Okay, so making some assumptions, yeah. right, about the, whether it's harmless or not, we don't know that, right? What else? What else is in there that would turn you off from the other answers? <clears throat> Say that again. You don't identify with the um, what the fire department, fire department is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. The whatever of a fire department is to like be efficient. Okay. Fires, unless you just said, yeah, you can mess around or more. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, so what about um, A? When you look at A and it said off duty, right? Did you guys catch that? Yeah. Right. Those little those little things in there that would kind of throw you off, well not, it didn't throw you guys off, right? So you caught that, we don't know, it didn't say that he was off duty, right? It said that he was just off house watch or something like that, it didn't say he was off duty. So just be mindful, and it seems like you guys are, about the options that you have, and how you should look for just little, little things that will throw off the whole scenario, right? They have assumptions in there. And if you fall for them, of course, you could select the wrong answer. But you guys did well on that, so the correct answer is C. And let's just talk about the rationale that the book states for selecting C. All right, so number 19, it states, horseplay in any way, shape, or form is an accident waiting to happen. It is tragic that many firefighters are injured each year as a result of horseplay. These are preventable accidents which have no place within the fire department. Moving on to number 20. You arrive in your office at 11 a.m. having been on an inspection tour since 8 a.m. A man has been waiting in your office for two hours. He is abusive because of his long wait, and he accuses you of sleeping off the hangover at the taxpayer's expense, you should, A, say that you have been working all morning and let him sit in the outer office a little longer until he cools off. B, tell him you are too busy to see him and make an appointment for later in the day. C, ignore his comments, courteously find out what his business is, and take care of him in a perfunctory manner. D, explain briefly that your duties sometimes take you out of, the, out of your office and that an appointment would have prevented the inconvenience. 
two minutes to evaluate and select your answer. All right, 20. You are in your office at 11 a.m., having been an, on an inspection tour since 8 a.m. A man has been waiting in your office for two hours. He is abusive because of his long wait, and he accuses you of sleeping off a hangover at the taxpayer's expense. You should A, say that you have been working all morning and let him sit in the outer office a little longer until he cools off. B, tell him you are too busy to see him and make an appointment for later in the day. C, ignore his comments, courteously find out what his business is and take care of him in a perfunctory manner. D, explain briefly that your duties sometimes take you out of your office and that an appointment would have prevented the inconvenience. What did you choose? C, C, I heard a B, B is a boy. D is a dog. D is a dog. Okay, so we have C and D. Yes? Okay, anything else? No? Okay. All right, where's my C person? Okay, so talk to me. Why did you choose C? Okay, okay. All right, so he was tussling before, um, or toggling, or trying to uh, figure out between C and D. So you landed with C, mm -hmm. because you said D doesn't really address the problem? Yeah. Okay, who chose D? Where's my D person, you? Okay, talk to me. Okay, so I, uh, I thought D because um, it addresses uh, what, um, the person's upset about um, and could put them at ease and uh, also be like, um, it, it explains to them why you're not there and uh, it kind of um, vouches for yourself as to why it uh, would mediate his concerns and also be constructive in that uh, find out. So you say it's a constructive way of handling this irate person in your office, right? Okay, so great responses. So let me ask you all, what does the word perfunctory mean? What does perfunctory mean? Because that, that is the, the, the goal or not goal, right? When you don't have a clear understanding of what the word means, then it could be the life or death of your choice, right? So what does perfunctory mean? No? All right, so perfunctory means that it is kind of done without care. Done without care. I'm just gonna, do, I have a duty to do, I'm just gonna do it, I, I don't care about it, I'm just whatever. You're gonna get whatever. If I need to write this letter, I'm just gonna write it however I feel like writing it for the day and whatever. So understanding what perfunctory means now, what, what would you choose? So our choices are C or D. So now what would you choose? D. D is correct, right? So you are handling the problem, but it's in a careless, not a, I won't say careless, it's just like out of duty, okay? So that one word kind of is the, the should I choose it or should I not choose it? Just the basic understanding of that word. So D is the correct answer for this. Let's go through and talk about the rationale between that choice um, or for that choice for through the book. All right, so the correct answer is D. There is no point in further antagonizing the man. On the other hand, by all means, let him know that you were involved in a fire department business, or that you were involved in fire department business. Suggesting that he might have made an appointment is constructive criticism. So it might sound negative, but it really wasn't. It's kind of a matter of fact, okay? Any questions, comments, concerns? 
All right, so we're moving along nicely. So we are going to go on to number 21. Number 21 states, during the routine inspection of a building, a citizen tells you very unfavorable personal comments concerning several top officials of the department. Of the following, it usually would be best for you to, A, try to change the subject as soon as possible. B, attempt to convince the citizen that he is in error. C, advise the citizen that your opinion might be like his, but that you can't discuss it. D, tell the citizen that it would be more proper for him to put his comments into writing. Two minutes to evaluate and choose your answer. All right, 21. 21 states, during the routine inspection of a building, a citizen tells you very unfavorable personal comments concerning several top officials of the department. Of the following, it usually would be best for you to, A, try to change the subject as soon as possible. B, attempt to convince the citizen that he is in error. C, advise the citizen that your opinion might be like his, but that you can't discuss it. D, tell the citizen that it would be more proper for him to put his comments into writing. What did you choose? D is a dog. D, what else? A is an apple. Yes. What else? Anything else? So between D is a dog and A is an apple, right? All right. So where's my D is a dog? Okay. Talk to me. Why did you choose D? Oh. Okay. Okay. Just put it put it in writing. And then give it to someone else And get it out of get get it out of here. Okay. All right. Who chose you? A, right? Okay. Huh? I think being in a situation where your boss is spoken about poorly is just a bad look for no matter what happens in the writing or not. Okay. I, I would change the topic immediately. Okay, he's saying, look, I, my name is Wes. I ain't in this mess. My name is Bennett. I ain't in it. Yeah. Okay, I want you guys, you guys can laugh. <laughs> That's what he's saying. He's like, no, I don't want to hear none of it. Okay, so I know that the book says, try not to make assumptions, but sometimes you're, you know, your human nature is like, let me create something in this and kind of evaluate it. Now, my question to you is, what if the person that was sharing all this salacious information, what if he told you that this high up official had four affairs? Would, would, you, would you tell him, would you give him the advice to go put it in a letter and send it to? <laughs> yeah, no, so, and, and this one, I'm making an assumption, right? Just to give the, uh, would that particular response be appropriate? Because we don't know what the information is. I mean, it could be the best of the, well, it's saying, it's implying that it's not good information, right? So if it's like really bad information, like whatever kind of affairs, you would not really give them the advice to go put it in writing, right? So really, the only, you try to figure out what's my escape route. Get out of there. So A is the best option at that particular point, right? So let's talk about what the book says. All right, so um, just to go back on some of the strategies, right? So the book, the um, tips and tricks, right, is to try to not put yourself in it so much. Try not to make too many assumptions. But situational judgment is calling on you to use background information, right? Use what you know. 
and then it's you know calling you to make certain little assumptions but don't take leaps and bounds on the other side right so you got to kind of try to toe the line right you got to figure out let me evaluate this but not make too many extreme assumptions and not use too much background information right but i gave you that little scenario there because it changed the whole perspective of how you would actually go about right uh, tackling that particular problem and the only way to uh, uh, deal with that one is just to get out of there, right? <laughs> Avoidance. All right, so the book states, 21, correct, A is correct. This might be a hard spot to get out of. No professional should discuss his or her superiors with the public, just like this young man said. It's not a good place to be. Do your best to find another topic of conversation. Avoid expressing any opinion, okay? So that was the best option for 21. We're gonna move on to 22. We're just gonna do a couple more, and then we're gonna move on to another place in the book. Number 22 states, a subordinate requests an official meeting with you and informs you that his wife is having an affair with a senior officer on the base, but outside of the command. He pre presents no evidence to support his statement and is emotionally charged. Select the most effective action, A through E, in response to the situation. Is it A, contact the senior officer and inform him of the charge being made against him? B, meet with your subordinate and his wife and gather more information as to the validity of the charge. C, sympathize with the junior officer and then say and do nothing. D, schedule a meeting between the junior officer and your commanding officer over presented charges. Or is it E, direct the junior officer to consult the area defense council base lawyers and to follow their guidance. Two minutes to evaluate and select your answer. All right, number 22. A subordinate requests an official meeting with you and informs you that his wife is having an affair with a senior officer on the base but outside of the command. He presents no evidence to support his statement as and is emotionally charged. Select the most effective action in response to the situation. A, contact the senior officer and inform him of the charge being made against him. B, meet with your subordinate and his wife and gather more information as to the validity of the charge. C, sympathize with the junior officer and then say and do nothing. D, schedule a meeting between the junior officer and your commanding officer over presented charges. E, direct the junior officer to consult the area defense council, base lawyers, and to follow their guidance. What did you choose? B is a boy. E is an elephant. You got a new, a new one. <laughs> okay. What else? Anything else? Everybody on board with E? Okay. So I'm coming over, so talk to me. Defend your answer. Why did you choose E? So it's out of your command, right? So it's like, you said that's above your pay grade. They didn't hire you to be the counselor, right? It's the psychologist on board. No, it's out of your pay grade. All right, you guys, how did you guys, um, Everyone else, how did you come up with E? Same thing, you said it's out of your pay grade. You don't want to be in there, huh? It says, okay. Okay, so you uh, interjected in there hierarchy of how to handle certain situations or? Just to follow their guidance, then I guess they have rules. Okay, all right, so E felt like the best answer. Anybody else want to offer their uh, reasoning why they chose that? 
So you guys are on the same page. So E is the correct answer. So let's talk about why the book, what rationale they gave. All right, you guys are on top of this. Too easy? Is it too easy? All right, so, let me get my glasses here. All right, 21, 22, right, we're on 22. All right, 22 states, the correct answer is E. As a potential legal matter, the junior officer should be mentored to attain information as to all his options from the military lawyers before meeting with anyone. So you're saying that none of the other ones wrote, uh, uh, um, came to the uh, level of um, anywhere close to being the correct or the most effective way to answer that. It's the lawyers take care of it and move on out the way. All right, so number 23, let's move on. So we go to the next section. 23 states, a peer in the instructor shop tells you of a new junior officer being perceived as either lazy, indifferent, or incompetent during flight missions. You do not know the officer, nor do you know anything about this person. The new flight officer is in another flight and is not making a good first impression. So now you need to select the least effective action in response to the situation. A, counsel the new officer and ask what is happening in his private life that might be affecting his performance. B, ensure that neither you nor those in your flight crew are scheduled to fly with the new person. C, acknowledge your peer's concern, ignore the comments and do not repeat them to others. D, ask the instructor to fly you with a new person for a few sorties to see if a fresh perspective might help. E, let the new officer know that he will likely lose his wings if things don't improve. Two minutes to evaluate, make sure you understand the mission and select your answer. All right, so one more time. 23, a peer in the instructor shop tells you of a new junior officer being perceived as either lazy, indifferent or incompetent during flight missions. You do not know the officer, nor do you know anything about this person. The new flight officer is in another flight and is not making a good first impression. It states, select the least effective action in response to the situation. A, counsel the new officer and ask what is happening in his private life that might be affecting his performance. B, ensure neither you nor those in your flight crew are scheduled to fly with the new person. C, acknowledge your peers' concern, ignore the comments, and do not repeat them to others. D, ask the instructor to fly you with the new person for a few stories to see if a fresh perspective might help. E, let the new officer know that he will likely lose his wings if things don't improve. What did you choose? C, C, you like C? Okay. So I got C, what else? Okay, I hear A, A is an apple. What else? B is a boy. D is a dog. E, E is an elephant. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we have C, A, and E. Anything else? Okay, so let's talk about it. All right, so we have C, who chose C? You, okay. So least effective is your, it could be used, but it's not gonna generate a positive outcome, right? So it could be used, it's just not the best way to handle the situation. Yeah, and uh, C 
see, you know, you could ignore his comments and whatever, mm -hmm. but that doesn't get, you know, maybe his thing, his claim is true. Maybe okay. Maybe it's untrue, you know, untrue. All the other answers do some type of investigation. Mm -hmm. This guy, you talk to him. Okay. This one, you just ignore his comments and don't just ignore them say be done with it <laughs> okay all right so who chose a where's my a person over here all right talk to me mm -hmm. so if you're going to assume it's kind of rude and you don't know if that's how he's normally acting or if he's having a great life or a bad life you don't know so it's kind of rude coming off of bad assumptions okay i suppose if you ignore it maybe because the junior officer doesn't like the guy, or so you could ignore his comments. Don't repeat him, but keep him in mind. Okay, all right, okay, I'm hearing you. All right, um, and last but not least, we have E. Where's my E person? Okay, so talk to me about E. Um, I just felt it was a disappointment because he mentioned that he doesn't really know the person, mm -hmm. and it sort of comes off as a little hostile. Wait, wait, which one? E. e, you said it comes off, off as a little hostile? Yeah, you don't, like he said he didn't know him, it came off as a little, like, threatening. And okay. It's sort of like, who are you to tell me, you know, in those situations. Wait a minute, so are you saying that E is going to come off a bit hostile, or it will not? It will. It, it will. will, so you're, oh, I see what you're saying, okay, because it's least effective, so you're saying, okay, E, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay, so let's go back and let's talk about um, all right, so um, selecting least effective is like the one that, that you have to watch out for. Most effective, it, it's kind of clear, but your least effective, it, it it's a brain twister for me. <laughs> I don't know how you feel, but the least effect. So let's go back to be the beginning of the, the book, right? Where when we started at the beginning of the class, we talked about the, how they're rating least effective, highly effective, and things like that. So let's just take a moment and look at the ineffective, the two choices that they have, right? So now we have to kind of put our hat on the, our, our thinking cap on with least effective. So here they offer highly ineffective and somewhat ineffective. So now we have to kind of rate least effective in between those, right? So your highly ineffective, highly ineffective would be likely to result in far more negative, far more negative than positive outcomes. Your somewhat ineffective is likely to result in somewhat more negative than positive, some, somewhat more negative than positive, right? So we have to evaluate the least effective in between those two, right? So as you're thinking about A, B, C, D, and E, you have to figure out which one of those is going to be the, the will have far more negative outcomes than positive, right? So least effective is not truly the, the worst thing that you could do. Does that make any sense? So it's not the worst thing that you could do. So I want you to take another minute and evaluate these options as what fits in the category of the worst thing that you could do. And then something that you could do, it's not gonna be the best thing to do. It's not gonna yield as much negative outcome than something that's absolutely the worst thing to do. Does that make sense? So you have varying levels in the least effective. So take a minute and just reevaluate it based on those two definitions of what ineffective is, okay? Okay, so I should have said that only evaluate these three since you guys chose these three, right? <laughs> um, so did that change your mind? a little bit in how you evaluated those five choices or those three? Did it change anything that you thought about? What, would it, no, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't change your mind. Okay, so let's just go over these three because the right answer is in one of these three. You did a good job in eliminating the other two. So let's evaluate C, A, and E. 
So C says, acknowledge your peer's concern, ignore the comments, and do not repeat them to others. Do you, do you think that is a highly ineffective way of dealing with that? I mean, do you, what if this guy is truly not performing and then he causes some kind of tragic accident or whatever? So not acknowledging the problem and see is probably highly ineffective in dealing with it. Would you not agree with that? Because if we make just a small assumption that if it's not addressed, then he could go on to hurt somebody, right? Maybe cause a fatality or something like that. So I think we can eliminate C as being the least effective, right? It's, it's more in line of highly ineffective to just ignore that this guy is underperforming. Does that make sense? So C is gonna to have to come off. Now if we evaluate A and E, right? Let's go back to A. Counsel the new officer and ask what is happening in his life that might be affecting his performance. So he might be probing a little bit, might be not his business to ask, but at least he's taking a step to see what's going on, right? So, in my opinion, he's taking some steps to resolve it. Is it the best way to resolve it? Probably not, right? You're, you're kind of probing, you're not the counselor, you're not HR, right, human resources. So I'm gonna put a star by this and say it's effective somewhat, right, based on the two definitions that we had. It's somewhat effective. It's not the best way to handle it. So now let's evaluate E. So E states, let the new officer know that he will likely lose his wings if things don't improve. Now, do you think that if, if someone comes to you, you don't know them, they're in some other department, and they're coming to you and they're telling you, do you think he might get angry or would he accept it? What kind of assumptions can we make about that? Hold on, say that again. Right. Okay. So it's less effective than A. Because A actually tries to get to the issue, where E is just to get better and get fired. Okay. So you don't think that uh, E could cause somebody to get upset with you if you came to them? Oh uh, yeah, I do think. You would get, get upset. Right, if he, you're threatening me, you're, I, I'm going to lose my wings, right? right. You don't know me. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, you know, it's a little hard. Do you guys agree? Trying to figure out what the least effective way, right? So, you have to be able to discern small, um, how can I, what word do I need to use? Um, they're just small differences between each of them, right? There's this very minor things. So I would think that if someone is talking to me, even though you don't know me, but you're not threatening, you're not coming in a threatening way, you're not telling me I'm gonna lose my wings, right? But you're coming to me and you're saying, hey, I heard something, whatever, you know, is there something going on that you need help with? I think that might produce a better or a more positive. It's not the best way. So in a nutshell, you guys see where I'm going with this? <laughs> a is the least effective, right? So again, you have to weigh, is it really ineffective? Is it somewhat ineffective, right? Is what's the worst thing that you could do? What's gonna produce more negative? outcomes than positive. So that's what you're really grappling with to try to solve. So, you know, you gotta somewhat trust your gut, right? Um, and, and just go for it, right? So, we beat that one up pretty good, right? 
So again, just evaluate. Again, go back to the front of the book and make sure that as you're practicing these problems, that when it comes to the least effective way to handle a particular situation, you know how to um, call out those small differences between all of your choices, right? What's, what's the worst thing that you can do? What could you do but it's not going to be the best thing to do? That's how you have to evaluate the least uh, effective uh, response to a situation, okay? So let's talk about what the book says. The book states, we're on number 23, the correct answer is A. Of the bad choices, making assumptions as facts demonstrates poor communication, bad professionalism, and failed mentoring. The other bad choices violate fewer core competencies. So again, it's just you're evaluating bad response over another bad response, but then you have to make sure that you understand the nuances, right, of what is considered the worst thing that you could do, what could you do, it's not gonna be the greatest outcome, but it's not gonna deliver as many negative outcomes as the other choice, all right? So you have a tough job to, to do, okay? <laughs> all right, so let's move on. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna save the last part for next week. Um, so you're gonna keep flipping the page, it's like 14 pages that you're gonna pass by. And you're going to come across some very dark um, print. And that's where we're gonna be. It's gonna start off with number one, and it's gonna be a caller asks. A caller asks. All right? So when you get there, just shake your head, and we can get started. So again, the, if there's no page number, so it's dark print. All it looks like bold type, bold type, okay, bold type. And then the first one says a caller asks. So we're gonna pretty much do the same thing. Um, I'm not gonna give you as much time to evaluate because the scenarios are shorter than the ones before. All right, so number one states, a caller asks for an explanation of a complex agency policy. How should you respond to this request? A, explain the policy in general terms and refer the caller to a written statement of the policy. B, refer the caller to the agency's website. C, refer the caller to your supervisor. D, offer to mail the caller a printed copy of the policy. Again, evaluate it. You have one minute to evaluate and select your answer. All right, number one states, a caller asks for an explanation of a complex agency policy. How should you respond to this request? A, explain the policy in general terms and refer the caller to a written statement of the policy. B, refer the caller to the agency's website. C, refer the caller to your supervisor. Or D, offer to mail the caller a printed copy of the policy. What did you choose? A, have A. All right, so I am just going to go through so that we can make sure that we're on time. Uh, A is correct, okay? And the explanation behind A is you will probably not be able to provide a complete explanation of a complex agency policy over the phone. But you should do more than just refer a caller to a printed document or, or a website, all right? The best course of action is to provide a general explanation and tell the caller where to go for further information. All right, so, hold on. All right, number two. Number two states, what is the most effective, again, that key word, what is the most effective way to ensure that an audience will remember the main points of a presentation? Is it A, use 
eye-catching visual aids. B, use humor to make the presentation more lively. C, allow time for questions after your presentation. Repeat, I'm sorry, D, repeat and emphasize your main points. One minute to evaluate and select your answer. All right, number two. It says, what is the most effective way to ensure that an audience will remember the main points of a presentation? Is it A, use eye-catching visual aids? B, use humor to make the presentation more lively? C, allow time for questions after your presentation? Or D, repeat and emphasize your main points? What did you choose? D, I heard D. I heard C. Okay, C and D, right? C is in cat. Who chose C? Raise your hand. Okay, so I'm gonna come out there now we're gonna debate this a little bit. Alright, so the person who chose C, talk to me, where are you? C, C, C. You chose C? You you chose what? D. D is in dog. You chose C. Okay, talk to me. Well, you know I chose C. Uh, a lot of time for questions after a presentation allow people to be to refocus and pay attention to what contributions other others are offering. Okay. And uh, using the eye catch and visual aids uh, doesn't mean you're really going to work. Okay. Okay. And it's the same as making your pre presentation humorous. They're not going to take it as serious. Okay. So it's kind of subjective what, what people like as far as visual aids, humor, using humor. And so you're feeling that if you give time at the end of the presentation, you could ask questions to clarify. Okay. All right. Um, and so you chose. D. D. So talk to me about D. Well, the main point of this question is what would have your audience remember your main points and constantly re uh, repeating and emphasizing them. They're going to hear it more than they're going to stick. They're going to stick? More. Okay. So I, answering questions and having an audience asking questions is an effective tool, but I think D is more effective. Okay. Just because so, someone has... So there are degrees of effectiveness on all of the options. So now it says, again, your mission is to pick the most effective, right? Okay, so let's talk about it. Let me go up to the front. So thank you for your answers. Okay, so I'm gonna ask the young man who gave the answer for C. Now, what if somebody left early? What would you choose? Which would you choose if somebody left the presentation early? You would pick, you would pick this one? So again, you, sometimes I know that, again, it says don't make too many assumptions. But sometimes you just gotta think things through. What, what, are, what if someone left early? They're not gonna get the information, so the most effective way to do it is for the presenter to keep saying, right, everything else is subjective. I might not care about nice visual aids. I might not care about humor. But if a presenter at that time, if I was a presenter, I'm gonna keep re-emphasizing something, right? So again, you gotta kinda think with multiple hats, okay? All right, so again, I, Pretty much, we could rule this one out. If somebody left early, then they're not going to remember what the presenter had. So the most effective way for a presenter to get their information to stick is to repeat it. So let's just go and talk about three. Um, OK, so three says, the book says that um, I'm sorry, we're on two. <laughs> uh, the answer is choice is D. And it says, at some point in a presentation, some audience members are likely to tune out. If their attention lapses 
at the wrong time, they might miss one of your key points. Even if they are paying attention, they might not realize that some of the points you are making are more important than others. That is why it is worthwhile to use repetition and emphasize to reinforce your main ideas. Okay, does that make sense? So again, as a test taker, I'm just gonna say it again, repetition, right? You're gonna have to use some assumptions, background knowledge, try to think things through, right? And then understand your mission, right? So the mission was to select something that's most effective, right? So you kind of had to think through some of those scenarios, right? Everybody doesn't like visual aids. Everybody doesn't like humor. So that those aren't effective. And lastly, someone could have left the presentation early. Right? So D was the most effective. So now we're going to move on to three. Three stated, or states, you are preparing to make a presentation about a complicated new procedure for processing applications. What is the most effective way to ensure that the audience will be able to follow the procedure after they have attended your presentation? Is it A, make your presentation as detailed as possible? B, provide handouts with all the information the audience will need to know. C, provide the audience with an outline of your presentation. Or D, encourage the audience to take notes. Again, your mission is to figure out which of these is the most effective way to handle that situation. You have one minute. All right, number three, you are preparing to make a presentation about a complicated new procedure for processing applications. What is the most effective way to ensure that the audience will be able to follow the procedure after they have attended your presentation? Is it A, make your presentation as detailed as possible? B, provide handouts with all the information the audience will need to know. C, provide the audience with an outline of your presentation. Or D, encourage the audience to take notes. What do you, B is a boy, B is a boy. All right, what else? All right, everybody on the same page with B? All right, we're not gonna belabor it. B is the correct answer, and your book states, most people remember only a few things from a presentation. If you want people to be able to follow a complicated new procedure, you have to give them written instructions that they can take away with them. All right, and so we're not gonna go through why the other answers aren't plausible, okay? Now, we're gonna move on to number four. The deputy director of your agency recently made an erroneous statement in a presentation at a business conference. This comment might lead some attendees to make errors that would be costly for their businesses. How should your agency handle this situation? A, post a correction on the agency's website. B, send a correction to all attendees. C, tell agency staff to be prepared to answer questions about the topic. Or D, correct the error that the next time the deputy director makes a public presentation. One minute to evaluate and pick your answer. All right, so number four. The deputy director of your agency recently made an erroneous statement in a presentation at a business conference. This comment might lead some attendees to make more errors that would be costly for their businesses. How should your agency handle this situation? Is it A, post a correction on the agency's website? B, send a correction to all attendees? C, tell agency staff to be prepared to answer questions about the topic. Or D, correct the error the next time the deputy director makes a public presentation. What did you choose? What is it? B, as a boy? Yes, okay. B, okay. Anything else? 
Anything else? All right. So we won't belabor this one. B is the correct answer, and the rationale is the erroneous statement made by the deputy director might have serious consequences. Specifically, it might lead some attendees to make errors that would be costly for their businesses. Given the seriousness of the situation, the agency has a responsibility to send a correction to all attendees. All right, we're gonna do one more together. Five, an angry caller refers to your agency staff as idiots and repeatedly states that your agency's actions are creating serious problems for him. How should you handle this situation? A, let the caller continue to vent until he calms down. B, tell the caller you cannot speak to him and will discontinue the conversation if he calls your coworkers idiots. C, try to turn the conversation to an unemotional discussion of the caller's problems. D, refer the caller to your supervisor. One minute to evaluate. All right, number five. An angry caller refers to your agency's staff as idiots and repeatedly states that your agency's actions are creating serious problems for him. How should you handle this situation? A, let the caller continue to vent until he calms down. B, tell the caller you cannot speak to him and will discontinue the conversation if he calls your coworkers idiots. C, try to turn the conversation to an unemotional discussion of the caller's problems. And D, refer the caller to your supervisor. What did you choose? C, C is in cat. All right, that is the best response. And the book states, in a situation like this, the best thing to do is to try to get the angry individual to discuss the issue in a rational, unemotional way. That is the best response. Now, your task is to take the next five problems, number six through 10. You have 10 minutes, two minutes per situation to answer it, and then we'll go over the answers. 10 minutes. Okay, so let's go over the answers. Number six, what did you guys choose? I'm hearing C. C is correct. It says C, be prepared to speak on the program and to respond to lively criticisms. The rationale that the book offers is the best way to handle the situation is to be prepared to speak about the program and answer any criticisms about it. Did anybody choose anything different? No, okay. Number seven, what did you guys choose? A is correct. Say that you will bring the suggestion to the attention of the appropriate person. The rationale for seven, the appropriate thing to say in this situation is that you will pass along the suggestion to the appropriate person, and then it goes to a, a bunch of um, reasons why not, so we're not gonna go through those. All right, number eight, what did you choose? All right, the answer choice is A. The question says that it may take some time to get the information you don't have already. In this case, if this is the case, sorry, there is no reason to make the representative of the other agency wait to receive the information you already have. That is the approach presented in choice B. Well, okay, so scratch that. <laughs> That's for B, all right, so choice a is correct, provide the information you have and say that you will send the rest as soon as you get it. All right, number nine, what is your answer? D is in dog? D is in dog for number nine is correct. Choice A, no, it's going through all of these reasons why the others aren't correct. So choice D, say that someone will call back in three hours with a clarification. And last but not least, number 10, what did you guys get? C is correct, all right? And let's see, the best course of action in this situation is to refer the caller to the office responsible for the program. All right, so you guys did well. How are you feeling? 
feel like you've mastered this? Yeah, you're feeling really good? Awesome. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do now is you're going to advance, go forward about 12 or so pages, and you're gonna see question one. Question one. And it has situation. Starts with a situation. You guys there? It's about 10 or 12 pages forward. And it says, situation, you are reviewing a batch of files. Got that? You are reviewing a batch of files. Yes? All right. Everybody okay? So we're going to go through this, just two of them. We're just going to evaluate two, and then we're going to jump into some ability to learn and apply information. So your situation, you are reviewing a batch of files that is about to be released to the public. You notice that someone's personal information was included in the batch of files. From your training, you know that this type of information is not normally released to the public, and you think the personal information was likely included by accident. Your response was to email your supervisor about the concern. Now you must evaluate if that response was A, very ineffective, B, ineffective, C, somewhat ineffective, D, somewhat effective, E, effective, or F, very effective. One minute to re evaluate and select your answer. All right, one more time. You are reviewing a batch of files that is about to be released to the public. You notice that someone's personal information was included in the batch of files. From your training, you know that this type of information is not normally released to the public, and you think the personal information was likely included by accident. Your response was to email your supervisor about the concern. Now, you must rate that response as A, very ineffective, B, ineffective, C, somewhat ineffective, D, somewhat effective, or E, effective, or F, very effective. What did you guys select? You chose B as in boy? D as in dog, okay. All right, anything else? Anything else? You guys are all on the same page with D as in dog. D as in dog. All right, so um, talk to me. So I want you to tell me why you chose D. Okay, I'm going to come out there. All right, I just want to hear your rationale behind why you selected D as in dog. So D as in dog is somewhat effective, right? Okay. So why didn't you choose very effective? Uh, because it takes a while for someone to answer the email. And okay. These files are just about to be released, so we should probably isolate this specific file and then wait versus just like... You so you're saying this is time sensitive, yeah. and so we all, I'm horrible with emails, right? So I have, how many people have 3,000 emails? <laughs> So, and it's my personal, but my work email is still cluttered, right? Yeah, so he's saying that it's, a, 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 it's not the most effective way to handle something that's urgent, right? So did you all think that? So for everyone, you knew that it wasn't an effect, ineffective way, so you scratched out all the ineffective and you focused on the three effective, right? All right, so somewhat effective is the correct answer. All right, so in that one, you're using some background knowledge about your own behavior about emails, right? And so you know that everybody doesn't check their email right, on, you know, right away. It can take some time, and you understood that this particular situation was time sensitive, and so that while it is an effective response, it's not the best response, right? So D is the correct answer. 
And so let's just see what your book says. The correct answer is somewhat effective. The response is somewhat effective because it may help resolve the problem. You are informing your supervisor of the problem, which is appropriate. However, the supervisor may not see or respond to the email in time to prevent the information from being released. A more effective course of action would be to speak directly with your supervisor or others responsible for the file. All right, number two, we're gonna do two, and then we're gonna jump into some ability to learn and apply information. Number two states, you are new to the public service. Your supervisor tasks you uh, via email to write a piece of correspondence on behalf of the minister. You feel the supervisor's tasking is vague, and you are unsure how to complete it. Your response was to complete the task to the best of your ability. You are new and your supervisor will understand. So your response, was it A, very ineffective, B, ineffective, C, somewhat ineffective, D, somewhat effective, E, effective, or F, very effective. One minute to reevaluate and select your answer. All right, question two, situation. You are new to, pub to the public service. Your supervisor tasks you via email to write a piece of correspondence on behalf of the minister. You feel the supervisor's tasking is vague and you are unsure how to complete it. Your response was to complete the task to the best of your ability. You are new and your supervisor will understand. Should you rate your performance or your response as A, very ineffective, B, ineffective, C, somewhat ineffective, D, somewhat effective, E, effective, or F, very effective. What did you choose? You chose C, somewhat effective, and I hear D is a dog, B is a boy. So B is ineffective. And C is somewhat ineffective. All right, so this is another one of those ones where the least effective, right, when we have to evaluate those, there's little nuances between all of them. So now you have three that you have to evaluate. So I think we're all on the same page with none of that whole action was not effective at all, right? So you guys are in agreement with that. So we can wipe out uh, D, E, and F. You all are in agreement with that. No one chose anything about effective, right? So now it's just the variations between very ineffective, ineffective, and somewhat effective. So let's just evaluate the scenario once again. You have a task to do. The directions are vague. And you take it upon yourself to go ahead and solve or complete the task to the best of your ability. And in completing the task to the best of your ability, an assumption was made, right? What, what, is, what was the assumption? That your supervisor will just understand, right? So, um, how, how would you, let me come out, I'm gonna take a poll. I wanna see how you operate on your job, see if you would do that. All right, so how do you think a supervisor would rate that? Do you think that they would be okay with you be, being given a task and you do it, but you didn't really understand how to do it? How do you think that would be? Do you think that would be favorable? Not really, right? Right? So, um, is, it the, is it the worst thing? Is it the worst thing that could happen? I mean, they, they, at least they tried, right? 
so when you start to think about it's not really favorable but it's not the worst thing and you have three categories to kind of choose that action very ineffective ineffective and somewhat ineffective with with a little bit of the discussion would you where would you fall between C and D like you already know it's, it's not the worst thing so it's not very ineffective right So you're saying you're, you're sticking, you chose C, right? So you're sticking with your answer. <laughs> okay, so you're defending it some more. All right. Um, all right, so the best thing that we could kind of do, again, because it's just slight nuances between, right, you can pick what's egregious and, and what is, is, you know, not the worst thing, right? So these... I would say that these particular scenarios are the toughest, right? Because it's just a slight nuance between somewhat ineffective and ineffective, right? Um, let's, let's evaluate it from this point. Did they get the job done? Did they, did, did, did they really get it done? Did they get the job done? Could they send the letter out? So where would you... I'm trying, I'm working on you. <laughs> I'm working on you, right? So they didn't get the, they didn't really get the job done, right? So it's not somewhat ineffective, because they didn't get it done. It was an ineffective way to handle that situation, right? So it's just a slight nuance, right? Um, so yeah, you're gonna have to really kind of dig into those scenarios and ask yourself some questions as you're trying to answer them so that you can parse out the little, the little things that would make you lean toward another answer, okay? So she didn't get the job done, and I, I'm being gender, gender biased, right? He, he didn't get the job done. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I said she, and I don't know what the gender is, so it could be he or she. Um, they didn't get the job done, so we're just gonna lean, lean in with ineffective. It, it was an effective way to do things, all right? So let's talk about the book. All right, so let's just evaluate what the book states as far as their rationale for handling the problem. All right, so we're on number two. It says the correct answer is ineffective and their reasoning. The problem here is that you feel the supervisor's tasking is vague and you are not certain how to, uh, not certain how to do the job. Going ahead and just completing the task will not contribute to solving this problem. If the task is done incorrectly, you may get some feedback that helps you improve for the future, but this is an ineffective way to get help or clarification on completing a task, okay? So now what we're going to do let me check the time. All right, so we're going to go into our ability to learn and apply information. We're gonna save the rest of this for next week's last session for situational judgment. Um, let's go ahead and open up the ability to learn and apply information. Again, you will see page one, two, three, and four. We're just gonna quickly go over the subject area one, what's expected of ability to learn and apply information. Are you guys there? So it's just a quick review. All right, so ability to learn and apply information. These questions test for the ability to learn new information and apply it to answer questions effectively. Candidates will read information presented in a training lesson and then answer questions regarding the information and procedures covered in the training lesson. All information needed to answer the questions will be provided in the training lesson. And candidates will be able to refer to the training lesson when answering the questions. Some of the questions may require candidates to combine information from different portions of what has been learned in the training lesson. No prior knowledge of any specific job or subject matter is needed. 
test task. In this section of the exam, candidates will read information from a training lesson to help them learn how to operate a piece of equipment. The training information is about a piece of equipment that is not real. It was created for the exam. Because a piece of equipment is not real, no prior knowledge of any specific job or subject matter is needed to answer the question in the section. Candidates will study the information presented in the training lesson, take notes if desired, and answer questions about information contained in the training lesson. Each question will be followed by four possible answers. Candidates must select the correct answer to demonstrate what they have learned in the training lesson. Candidates will be able to refer to the training lesson while answering the questions. There is a sample training lesson here. Um, we are not going to spend time on this, so I would advise you when you're in your quiet space to look over the examples, all right? So you're gonna flip the page, you're gonna see uh, figure one systems monitor front panel. You're gonna turn the page again and then you're gonna have a page where it states interpreting charts and tables. I'm gonna review that quickly. Charts organize data. Tables, on the other hand, are used to represent a large amount of information in an organized way. All information will be presented in columns and rows. Let's look at five tips for interpreting questions using charts and tables. Read the title. Read the title. Carefully read the title of the graph, chart, or table. Next, look at the keys or key, there could just be one. Make sure you understand what each part of the key, if a chart or graph, means. Read other titles. Make sure you read the title of each row and or column on a table. Look at figure before questions. Get a general understanding of what the chart or table's information relays before looking at the question. I'm going to emphasize that one because I truly believe in that. When you have a chart or table or graph, I always try to get myself grounded or uh, familiar with the chart or graph first before I go and read the questions. Of course, you're going to go back and forth, but I like to get an understanding of the chart first. When we're talking about reading comprehension, the strategy or tip that we've always shared with you is if you're reading a reading, uh, uh, reading passage, you want to go and read the question so that it can ground you on what to look for within the passage. But then I use the other side when it comes to charts and tables. Read those first, not read them all the way through because they're gonna be very intense, some of them, as you will see in the practice uh, charts and tables in this particular practice book but you wanna get an overall understanding of it and then go and read the questions, okay? Last but not least, of course, hands down, read carefully. Carefully read the questions or question to figure out what information you're going to be looking for. Make sure you understand which part or parts of the chart or table will provide you with the relevant information. Now, we completed the first three charts and tables. We finished the first three. The one that we're gonna start on today is entitled, you can just pretty much go four pages in. Maintenance helps avoid energy waste and repairs. Maintenance helps avoid energy waste and repairs. You can see that the table already is pretty dense. You have five minutes to evaluate and then answer the questions, five minutes. All right, so number one, a possible malfunction for control board failure would be what? Say it again. A, A is an apple. A is an apple, it's correct. Two, adjusting defrost control would be a solution for what cause? I'm hearing C, C is correct, heater malfunction. Three, operations and maintenance issues should be addressed for what reasons? Anyone? Anybody? B, B as in boy is correct. To avoid excessive energy use, cost of repairs, potential product loss. Four, 
If ice cubes, I'm sorry, if ice builds up in the drain of a walk-in freezer, a possible solution would be what? D, D is in dog is correct, clean drain line. Five, the table shown troubleshoots a walk-in cooler slash freezer. It displays possible reasons why something may be wrong and how to fix it. What titles can be found in the chart? D is correct, D is in dog. Malfunction, possible causes, Solution. Flip to the next page. You have a smaller chart, four questions. I'm still going to give you five minutes to complete. All right, number one. The engine has a weak battery. What action would be needed to fix the problem? D is a dog. B, B is a boy. Did anybody get anything else? D, okay, I have a D. What'd you get, D? Okay, so majority rule, D, clean and tighten connections. All right, and so for number one, look at the second row and look at action needed in that column, second row, last column for that answer, clean and tighten connections. You see that? Okay, awesome. All right, number two. Gears were checked for wear or damage because of the binding of the ignition key. What would be the reason that this was done? Okay, A, A is an apple, is correct. Anybody get anything different? A is an apple, awesome. Three, the starter spins, but the engine will not crank. What could be the possible cause? C, everybody got C, awesome, C is correct. Faulty uh, overrunning clutch, yes. Four, why would system tests be checked for in a service manual? B, B is a boy, B is a boy, all right, because the engine won't crank. All right, so it is, 810, uh, you guys can handle one more? You can handle one more? All right, so in the next one, so on when you flip the page, the number one, ignore that one because there were no options given. I didn't understand how that was written, so ignore one. You're gonna do two, three, and four, okay? And I'm gonna give you four minutes because there's only three questions, okay? Four minutes to evaluate this and then answer the questions. Yeah, two through four because number one wasn't fully, they don't have any answers there. All right, number two, we're starting at number two because number one was not fully written. What LCD alarm is displayed when the machine does not take water? B, B is in boy. B is in boy is correct, F2. Three, LED numbers one and four flash. What is a possible solution? We have C, anything else? Did everybody have C? You have, okay, so um, let's talk about this. Um, where did you, tell me where did you find your answer? Now, I had to create my own answer key. <laughs> so I came up with D and I'll tell you where I got information. I got my information from one, two, three, four, five, the fifth row down, and the second in the last column, right? Did you, did you see that? What did you get? Yeah. So is that, did you choose, did you choose D? You chose C and D? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So let's look at 
said that. Okay, so you had C, you had C and D, you had C and D as well? Okay, uh, so it says LED numbers one and four flash. One and four flash, what is a possible solution? So uh, make sure the drain pump filter is not clogged, see page. Okay, and then it says make sure the rinse hold special function is enabled, and then make sure that the drain hose is not squashed and the internal diameter of the drainage is larger. Uh, okay, so, you know what, here's a slight distinction, is that in, in the one before it said, make sure the drain pump filter is not, the drain pump filter, right? So it's drain, not just a clog anywhere, but the drain pump. So I think, I'm, I'm biased. <laughs> D. I, I think, do, would you guys agree? D is more specific. Right, so my argument would be it's the drain pump, not just a clog anywhere, but a drain pump clog, right? So D would give you a more direct answer. Will you, you guys agree with me? Yes, because I'm the teacher. <laughs> so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, um, I'm, I'm gonna pull and rank and say, I, I think D is the better answer. Okay, so let's go for number four. Uh, the machine does not turn on or start. What LED, LCD alarms display? A, none, none, right? Okay, all right guys, so we have a few minutes and so I have a little bit more time to torture you. Yes, you guys have a little notepad because I'm gonna give you three word problems. I'm going to read them to you and you can solve the word problems and then I'm gonna let you go home and get some sleep, right? I see it in your eyes. You guys ready for sleep? No, not really? You ready to hang all night? Huh? <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, you're number one. Alice buys a sandwich for $16 and a drink for $2.25. She pays with a $100 bill. What is the amount of her change? I'll read it again. Alice buys a sandwich for $16.95, a drink for $2.25. She pays with a $100 bill. What is her change? So she buys a sandwich for $16.95, $16.95, and a drink for $2.25, and she pays with a $100 bill. What is her change? All right, what did you guys come up with? Say that again. Come up here. My legs hurt. <laughs> What'd you get? Oops. 80? 80, 80, 80 cents. Is it? So 16, 95, and 2. Oh, I think 20. I put the wrong change. Oh, okay, because I had, uh, so we have 12 there, 8, 9, right? Oh, no, I think you're right. Oh, yeah, plus the 8. And so we have, right? 19, 20. So we have 10 there, nine, nine, right? So eight, yeah, 80, 80. What was I thinking? I'm giving you the problem, I have the wrong answer. <laughs> okay, 80, 80, is that what you guys got? 80, 80, okay. All right, next problem. To save postage, James is mailing several items in one box. 
Two of the items weigh 13.9 pounds and 20.65 pounds. The packing material and box weigh 0.3 pounds. The maximum package weight the post office accepts is 70 pounds. What is the maximum weight of the remaining items? I'll read it again. To save postage, James is mailing several items in one box. Two of the items weigh 13.9 pounds and 20.65 pounds. The packing material and box weigh 0.3 pounds. The maximum package weight the post office accepts is 70 pounds. What is the maximum weight for the remaining items? All right, what do you guys come up with? You want to come up? I can't hear. <laughs> okay, what'd you get? Say that one more time. 45, 15. 45, 15. Okay, I gotta check my work again. <laughs> okay, so we have 13.9, right, for the one of the weights, and then we have 20.65, right? And then we have 0.3 for the packing material, right? So we have five. 18, 4, 3. Is that what you guys got for all the combined weight? 34.84. And then the maximum is 70. So we have to deduct 34.85. All right, so we have, you were just, you were one off. So 35.15 is the maximum weight of the rest of the packing material. Did you guys get that? I'm not completely wrong. Okay. Yeah. So just check your addition and your subtraction, okay? Last but not least, last but not least, okay? Um, it says the Walkers pay $0.1165 for each kilowatt hour of electricity they use. Their friends in the neighboring state pay. And their friends, 0 0.095. All right. Was that enough time to solve? Or you need another minute or 30 seconds? I only gave you 30 seconds anyway. So what did you guys get? Anybody? Point zero nine 
nine, five. Bring down your five, four. Oops, what did I do? Hold on, I put the wrong number up there. Oh, six, five. Six, five. One, we have 11 there. Two, zero. Okay? All right, so these were just some word problems with decimals. All right, um, until next week, same bat time, same bat place. <laughs> All right, guys, have a wonderful week. All right, take care, have a great night.